My name is Jared Beckwith, and today we're going through MIT's Introduction to Deep Learning class for self-driving cars. One of the first projects that they introduce when taking this class from MIT is deep traffic right here. What is it exactly? Well, the premise behind it is that Americans spend 8 billion hours stuck in traffic every year, and deep neural networks can help, pretty much meaning self-driving cars. So the whole goal of this project here is to write some code that can control this self-driving car, the red car is you, and you want to make it go as fast as possible with an 80 mile per hour speed limit, and it takes an average of your speed over time. Now, if you're just getting started and you don't have a deep understanding of Python coding language, you don't have a deep understanding of neural networks, this is a good place to start. You don't have to download TensorFlow, you don't have to download PyTorch, you can do this right here in your browser, even on a Chromebook. I'm doing this on my Chromebook right here, guys. So let's go get a little deeper into the documentation behind the project. So it says, Deep Traffic is a deep reinforcement learning competition, part of the MIT, MIT Deep Learning for Self-Driving Cars course. The goal is to create a neural network to drive a vehicle or multiple vehicles. It, go, it gets a little more advanced if you want to add multiple, multiple vehicles. You, we can do that. I haven't gotten to that level yet, but I have gotten a pretty good understanding of programming one single self-driving vehicle. So you want to make it go as fast as possible through the dense highway traffic. So how are we going to do that? Well, quick overview here. Um, on the upper left, you can find a real-time simulation. This is the real-time simulation right here of your car. It's going to be moving on this page. Right now, we're at negative 57 cars passed, so we're definitely going to have to change up the code. Um, okay, here's the simulation here. Uh, you can either put it on normal speed for the simulation, or you can do it on fast speed, which it updates everything in real time. This is more like a realistic driving simulator. This just gives you all the updates in real time. So you can see the, the actual calculation going as fast as possible. Let's see. Um, the following variables control the size of the input the neural network gets. He, these are the first three variables that you get. But in the beginning, you definitely need to change these because the car is essentially blind. It says lanes to the side, one, so it can only see to one lane to the side, which isn't good for if you want to be moving in and out of traffic. Ten patches ahead. Uh, Probably the most important thing for this 2D self-driving car simulator is seeing many patches ahead so it can anticipate which way it has to move through traffic. And patches behind a zero. All cars these days are mandated to have backup cameras so you do and mirrors, so you do want to be able to see behind you. So we're going to change that up. Let's do that right now, guys, because we are getting passed in the race. We are losing the race. So just like I, just like we were looking at before, lanes to the side, I'd say if we can get three, three lanes to the side, we'll be looking pretty good. Patches ahead, we want to be looking way ahead because we are losing the race, guys. Uh, let's say, let's say 35, 35 patches ahead. That way we'll have the full view of the course and patches behind, uh, let's say five, five patches behind. Train, iter train iterations at 10,000. Might want to bump that up to like 100,000 because neural networks usually take a lot of time, a lot of train iterations to improve over time. For us to start training, we just press the run training button. Let's apply the code that we've we've already put in so far and see if we can catch up. So we applied, we gave it, we gave the car 35 patches ahead vision, three lanes to the side vision, and five patches behind. So that's a small increase. Look, past one car, it's getting a little bit better. But the next thing we need to do is, let's see. Yes, looking at the code, that's what we need. Um, we did the first part, which is good. Okay, um, looks like this probably doesn't need to be touched. 
Um, says that this is good. Number of neurons, we're definitely going to have to change this because it only gives you one basic neuron to, to start out. If we could 10x that, multiply it by 10, I'll definitely be, be liking the results from that. Um, oh, yes, it says right here. This is where we're at, temporal window. It says um, you don't really need to touch this part except maybe the temporal window. So we're going to change the temporal window to zero. Oh, okay, it's better than negative. We're doing, we're doing better. Change the temporal window to zero. Why do we do that? Well, I'm not exactly sure because I'm not an expert yet. But I will learn in the future. Number of neurons, definitely 10x that. We will go straight to 10. Let's just do 11 neurons. And if you, if you make your neural network too big, it'll give you an error message like this if your submission size is too big. So let's say 12 neurons. That fits within the model limitations. May, maybe we can get 13. Let's see. Bigger the better, right? As long as it's within the guidelines. Okay, we got 12 neurons. We're definitely going to need that. We got a ReLU activation function. Don't really need to know too much about that for this basic project. Um, let's see. Gamma. Gamma. This usually depends. It's going to be from between 0 and 1. Right now, um, I say we can make it 0.8. I saw another another guy, he was saying 0.98 worked pretty good for him. But I, I like the idea of a 0.8 gamma, so we'll definitely put that in there. Apply that code. All right. And that is going pretty good. All right. Now, all that's left to do is to run the training, let our car improve over time, and once we get to the end we can start a little evaluation run and see how we really did with all this code that we we just put in. It's probably going to take a little bit of time to train because we, remember, we upped the train iterations by 90,000. It was at 10,000 to start, so we definitely upped that. Now, let's just wait and come back in a minute and see where this car got from the code that we initially put in. All right, at this point, the neural network has passed over 100 cars. It's starting to pick up speed. It's, it's getting a little bit of training in. Here's the bar to give us a little progress update on our training. It's barely just started. If you look up here, it gives you a graph to see its progress over time. And we're making some drastic improvements from when we just started out it was at negative like 23 cars. We were getting passed by everybody. Now the car, it's, it has a little agency to it. It knows to change lanes when someone's in front of you. It knows because in the beginning, the car was essentially blind with almost no vision ahead. Now it sees 35 patches ahead. It sees five patches behind and three to the side. So it knows that, boom, we can get to the right, get to the left. Oh, see? It's just started training, so usually a fully trained model would have went to the left and dodged, but all right, that's just the 150 update. I will be back when we're at 500 cars passed. Okay, here we are at a little bit over 500 cars passed, increasing slowly and steadily. If you guys are wondering, how is this getting better and better over time? Well, it's through a concept that's called deep reinforcement learning. What is that exactly? Well, it pretty much means that the artificially intelligent agent, which in this case is the red car, which we put in the code for, um, it improves over in time through trial and error. That's deep reinforcement learning. There's another type of learning which is called supervised learning, where something tries to learn based off of examples. But in this case, the best option is definitely going to be reinforcement learning. In a second, we're about to do the evaluation run, see where we're at. In order to pass this class, you have to get at least 65 miles an hour on average. Right now, I don't think he's up to the task. 
uh, of 65 mile per hour average because he's he's kind of maxing out at 65. So we probably won't pass yet. But once his training bar fills up a little bit more, I think we can give it an evaluation. And if we get over 65 miles an hour, you guys need to hit that like button. Definitely subscribe. I got more artificial intelligence content coming in the future. Give me one second to train this and we will start this evaluation. We're approaching a bit over 1500. We just ran a test and got 67.61 miles an hour. Our neural network has passed the class. So that's good and all, but can we do better? That's the question. Um, I think I'm a lower, I'm gonna lower it back to the original of 10,000 train iterations and just see how it goes from there. See if we can get a little increase on our speed, our efficiency. Cause a lot of a lot of stuff you just gotta you just gotta play around and try different things. And if you try enough things through trial and error, deep reinforcement learning, you're gonna get a good result. And let's try to get sixty nine or seventy miles an hour. If you can get sixty nine to 70 miles an hour, that'll put you in the top 10% of an MIT deep reinforcement learning competition. That's pretty impressive if you ask B. But let's see if we can do it. Train this other model and let's see what results we get. Okay, it looks like the new model that we've been training is up to 321 cars passed. We're doing an evaluation on it to see if it beats the 67 from the previous model. 68.8, baby. There we go. See, I, I knew this one was going a little bit faster. So the only thing we train we changed was from 100,000 train iterations to 10,000 train iterations. I, I've seen someone have success with 300,000. I don't know, guys. It's something that you're just going to have to play around with. These are the basic the basic controls to the car that you're going to have to change these variables. Um, but some more advanced stuff like down here, something that maybe I shouldn't have changed is the gamma. Maybe I should have left that at 0.7. These are the advanced ones. I'm not really sure what to do with these exactly, but I did train a neural network that put me in the top 10% of MIT self-driving car competition. You guys can copy exactly what I did. I hope you guys have fun with this deep traffic, deep neural network reinforcement learning game. This is a part of MIT's deep reinforcement learning class. If you guys want to see more videos, if you want to see more artificial intelligence machine learning, just hit that subscribe button real quick. Hit that like button. And maybe next video, I think I can come up with a deep Tesla solution. So if you guys, if you guys want to see that, this gets even more into self-driving cars. And we can make this a series. We could, we could continue and come up with more videos as time goes on. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you all on the next video.